Hey guys, welcome to another Heinrichs Made video. In today's video, I'm going to use this rectangular New Jersey bar that I made in the past, and I'm going to make a few more of them. I'm going to use these small two-part sand casting mold flasks. It looks like it'll fit. I'm going to be making the mold using this sand called Green Sand. The brand name is Tetan Black Olive and Sand. It holds its shape very well, and it's great for making molds. All right, guys, this is the green sand casting process. I'm using a piece of wood for a backing plate for the pattern. Place half of the flask down, and then add talcum powder and brush it around. This is so the sand does not stick to the pattern. I sifted the first part of the sand with a strainer so I can get the fine particles of sand really into the part to try to get a better finish. Press down on the sand and ram it down. Then scrape off any excess sand. When you have the top flat, grab a hold of the flask, including the piece of wood, and flip it over. The piece of wood is there mainly so the pattern doesn't fall out when you flip it over. For this half of the flask, we're doing the exact same thing as we did with the last one. Adding the talcum powder, brushing it around, filling it with sand, compacting it, and scraping off the top so we have a flat surface. Now remove this half of the flask so we expose the pattern. Tap the pattern in different directions to try to really loosen it up so we can easily flip it over and pull the pattern out without disturbing the imprint in the sand. Now we need to take both halves of the flask and clear out the sand so we have an area for the molten metal to flow into this cavity. Now that I have the first flask made, I'm going to start melting the metal. For this melt, I'm going to be just pulling out some scrap aluminum ingots that I had laying around and some cutoffs from previous casts. Today, I'll be placing it into an electric furnace to melt this down into molten metal. Once the crucible is loaded, just turn on the machine and wait. While the aluminum is cooking, I'm actually putting together three more casting flasks. Checking back on the furnace to see if the metal has melted. As the metal is melting, I am adding more aluminum to the crucible. It looks like my crucible is almost full of aluminum and I'm going to add one more piece to kind of top it off. This should give me enough aluminum to cast two of my casting flasks. And you can see I actually have four of them. So after this first one, I'm going to pour another set of two. And make sure you heat your molds and your pouring tongues before pouring the metal. It's good that I actually still have some molten metal left over in the crucible. That will help melt the additional aluminum that I put in melt much quicker. So I'm just going to organize my work area a little bit and move the flask out of the way to add the two other flasks that I have. All right, guys, it's been about 15 to 20 minutes, and it's now time to open up these flasks. And you can see the steam coming off of these flasks. They still are hot. So make sure to wear your personal protective equipment. And for this, I'm just using leather welding gloves. For some reason, the lighting is really affecting my camera, and you can't really see the detail very well. So I'm trying to bring them a little bit closer for you to see. They really did come out very good. So those were the first two, and these are the second two. These flasks are actually a little bit smaller than the first ones. Because of that, I got a little bit of shrinkage into the part. 
And I think I knew that from a previous cast. Those flasks there are mainly good for like coins and something obviously smaller than what I made today. And you could see it just barely fit inside of the flask. But I didn't want to just make two. So I just went for it to see what would happen. Guys, you know what I really hate? When you're trying to make a video, but the neighbor decides to cut the grass. Yeah, he probably saw me taking his picture. It's not actually my neighbor. They hire somebody to cut the grass. Man, now I gotta wait till they're done. All right guys, here they are all cooled off and all the sand has been removed. Again, my camera's not really picking up the detail that great, but they all came out really good. So now I'm gonna take it to the vise, cut off the sprue and start really cleaning it up. At first I was using a hand file, but then I got smart and decided to use my belt sander. This works so much better and saves me a lot of time. And then I took it to my lathe because my lathe has a sanding disc attachment on it. It works much better on this than it does a drill. I started off by sanding with 180 grit and went all the way to 600 grit. And then off camera, I added some aluminum polish to each piece to really give it a good shine. They all came out really good. And you can see on that one specifically, you could see a little bit of shrinkage on the top. But again, they all came out really good. I do believe the other one got shrinkage on the back, but it's not a big deal. I might actually just give those ones away. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, smash that like button. Leave a comment below and stick around for next week's video.